I am reasonably confident at this point in my career that the only way to get good at anything is to just stop caring about it. Oh man, switching it all up today. Even the mug. I don't know if y'all are following Jason, but he's got this tiny little nascent channel and you know, God love him, he's a good buddy of mine. Maybe go give him a follow because he's kind of struggling on YouTube. Now, here's the situation. We're in a different location. Well, same location, different workbench. This is kind of my secondary bench. This was the bench I made for my apartment when I was living in a tiny studio and I needed a place to just cut hand joinery. The reason we're not at my main bench is because the table is currently being finished. And that brings me to the reason we're doing this video. I have a habit that I try to hold to pretty well when I am in the middle of finishing a project to give myself a little mental break instead of diving right into the next project, right into the next commission. I take a couple of days and I play. I make a thing that has no bearing, no meaning, no, no consequences, and I just, enjoy the process of woodworking, enjoy the exploration of form, and it gives me an opportunity to not care. And I think that's where a huge amount of growth comes from, is the ability to not care about a thing and just let the object evolve. You explore interesting new avenues, you create new pathways for yourself and your creative practice out of the lack of necessity to appease somebody else, be it yourself, a partner, a client, whatever the situation is. Now, with the table being finished, I have these scraps left over from the table build, so I'm gonna make a cutting board. So the next question becomes, how the hell do you make a cutting board interesting? And how do you make an interesting video about a cutting board? Because they've all been done. It's one of the very first things you do as a woodworker is you take a piece of wood, you cut it down, you throw some mineral oil on it, and you call it a cutting board. I have many cutting boards of that exact same nature, just slabs of cherry, in fact, that I had left over years ago. I also have cutting boards that are fancier, but in reality, they're just a piece of wood that's prettier. So today we're going to explore a technique that I don't use very often. In fact, I haven't done this technique in probably a decade. So I think number one, it would be fun to do because it's been a minute and I can brush off these old skills. And number two, I think it does add a visual element to the board that makes it more interesting. So let's explore. So here's where I think this is going to go. I have this board. This is left over from the table build. I've got another off cut that is slightly longer than this board is wide. I think this is a beautiful opportunity for breadboard ends. So from a design perspective, here's what we're working with. I have all of this flat sawn grain going on here. I've got a little bit of sapwood here. These are two visual elements that while not balanced in the middle of the board can be used to our advantage. I've got this piece, which is gonna be our breadboard end, which is going to add another visual element and help it feel a bit more refined. Those are the three components we're gonna mix and match and play around with. I'm just going to start cutting and see where this goes. look like I was just chopping up wood and I was but a lot of design design a lot of design choices were made in the context of that process so let's have a conversation about it so this is the board with which I started and it's not quite balanced visually right like ideally in a project this cathedral would be in the center of the board or I would find a way to make it in the center of the board it's got a mild arc to it which I kind of like this sapwood also has a mild arc to it and I think these two visual elements will balance each other out nicely I cut those away and then I pulled in our end caps for our breadboard and they're gonna sit on here like this 
Neither of these pieces have perfectly straight grain. In a proper project, in a client project, that wouldn't do for me. That would be really irksome, it would bother me visually, but even though it's not quite straight, this has a little bit of an arc to it here, this has a little bit of an arc to it here, so it, it kind of encloses the piece in a symmetrical way. In fact, as I was looking at it, I thought, well, given the mild arc to this grain, it might be interesting to put a little bit of a round on the ends of these breadboards. So we'll see if that's a thing we do in the end, but for right now, this is kind of the general layout of our board. All right, all right. I've prattled on long enough about design and grain and all the other things. Let's cut some joinery. Hey, here's a fun quick tip. If you don't have a vise, or if your vise is being consumed by a slab during the finishing process, get yourself one of these hand screws. You can pick one up for like 30 bucks. You can use a couple of clamps to tack it down to your makeshift workstation. And you got a pretty good vise, something that I used for many years before I could afford to buy a vise. Just a hot tip. Joinery's done, you see how fast and easy that is with the router. And speaking of using the router or power tools in general during the finishing process, I'm sure there are going to be questions, so let me address this right now. Yes, I am creating dust in an environment in which I am also finishing a project. Is that ideal? No. However, it's an impossible reality to avoid because I share the shop with two other people who also need to continue making a living making furniture. So to pretend like this is going to be a dust free environment is kind of absurd. I want to minimize the dust and its impact on the finishing process. Sure. Which brings me to another inevitable question. I'm routing freehand right next to a table I'm finishing. Yes, the last coat of finish I put on was last night. That finish is currently dry. I am waiting until after I'm done with this to put on today's coat. There is some dust on the tabletop right now. It's not affecting the finish because that layer is cured. Then I can wipe it down. I can vacuum it off. I can use a tack cloth. I can apply the next coat and nobody's gonna be any the wiser. But back to this project, I've got a board. Everything's looking good. Everything is looking clean. The last couple of things I want to do on this thing are shape the ends, do all of the surface prep, and I'm gonna add a couple of pegs. Now, traditionally in a breadboard like this, you would have one peg in the middle and you would have two expansion pegs out here in elongated slot so that this board could still expand and contract. This board's a little bit small to do that, so what I think I may do is actually just divide this up and put in two pegs here. Not quite in thirds, maybe I'll squeeze it to the center just a little bit more, it just depends on how it looks but I think I'm only gonna go with two pegs. They'll both be in elongated slot so that this board can still move with the seasons and we'll see how that looks.
Here's an excellent example of the not caring I was talking about. My plane left a bunch of track marks on this piece because I didn't set, because I didn't really care that much. I kind of liked the plane marks. I kind of liked the hand tool marks. That's not something I usually leave on a piece, but I think leaving those track marks on there just gives it a little bit of handmade feel that I rather like. So we're leaving them. There it is, friends. Easy, simple, straightforward, a little bit of joinery, a little bit of wood, a little bit of practice for you, and you got yourself a really lovely little board that feels balanced, feels interesting. It's a delightful little gift piece and something to practice with. Now, the point I'm trying to make with this project is not that you shouldn't care about the craft, that you shouldn't practice the craft, that you shouldn't be passionate about getting better at the craft. The point I'm trying to make is, not everything you make is going to be good. Not everything you make is going to be the best thing you've ever made. In fact, only one thing you'll ever make is going to be the best thing you've ever made. Everything else is just an object. So you might as well play around and have fun with it and explore and learn and try new things. When I tell you to take risks, I don't mean get out there and do something stupid on the table saw and take a risk that way. I mean take an aesthetic risk. Play with the placement of your pegs. Play with the dimensions. Play with the proportions. Play with whether it's flat sawn or rift sawn or quarter sawn. Play with mixing materials. Get it wrong. Make ugly things because that is just as valuable, if not more valuable, than succeeding. They're just objects, it's just wood. And the only reason we do this thing, furniture making, woodworking, is because for some reason we're drawn to it and makes us happy. So do the damn thing. Don't worry about whether you're gonna get it wrong. Don't worry about whether it's good, bad, or ugly. People will judge it and people won't like it regardless of whether it's good or not. So play, that's all it is. It's just play, guys, it's just, making things to make yourself smile and make other people smile when you gift them beautiful objects. So that's this week's video. I need to put another coat of finish on that table now so that I can get that bloody video out to you sooner rather than later. And friends, I hope you get in the shop this weekend, make some things, play around, take aesthetic risks. And until next time, cheers. Mm -hmm.